Hello and welcome to this very special broadcast. It's titled, rightfully so, Women on Top. We're discussing how do professionally successful women fare when it comes to either choosing a life partner or a partner in general or staying married or being single. What is the latest trend coming in as far as relationships are concerned, dating or finding a partner when you're professionally so successful? Joining me on this very special broadcast is Nandini Bhalla, the editor of Cosmo India and digital editor of Harper's Bazaar, Ida Dubey, an actor and producer, Akshita Gandhi, contemporary artist, Geeta Khanna, she's a matchmaker. Let's begin with Ida first. Ida, does a woman's high-flying career or in a woman who is in a high-profile career hurt her being able to find a partner? You're such a popular person. Would you rather be single till you find a partner who supports your ambitions than be with a partner who gets intimidated by your success? What's been your experience like, Ira? Uh Absolutely. I think, uh, you know, feminism and the fact that women uh, are in positions of power in so many ways, um, pun intended, uh, all over the world today has become so misunderstood, I feel, Chaiti. Hmm. Uh, but the truth is, uh, men have always felt threatened by women, even if they're not in power, so to speak. You know, it's not just about professional success. I think we as a species, as the sexes, have different things in different proportions. Um, I think this idea of being intimidated by women who are powerful or successful is a bit of a myth, uh, if you ask me um, okay. personally. Uh, though I feel that, uh, see, at the end of it all, I'm reminded of a quote that I was reading just yesterday. Hmm. Uh, I s sort of stumbled upon it and it's, it said it's a Virginia Woolf quote and this woman wrote 120 years ago. Of course, she was very feminist. And uh, the line is... Uh, <laughs> What I value is the naked contact of a mind. Now, to me, as a as a successful person, as you so very kindly, uh, you know, call me, um, I think your connection with another human being is is for me that is the most important thing. What I love about this quote is that the things that are actually contributing to a permanent, lasting sort of a relationship and mm -hmm. the idea of marriage, the idea of relationships, again have morphed so much in our current state of uh, the world. Hmm. Uh, you know, our understanding of a modern relationship and even marriage hmm. uh, is completely different than what it was 50 years ago. Yeah. So for someone like me, I feel, um, you know, lust is one thing and a physical attraction is one thing, but the, the idea of the naked contact of a mind, ultimately it's the, you know, it's your connection with the person's mind. If you want to be metaphysical or spiritual, it's a soul. Hmm. And uh, come across so many people, you come across so many people who, uh, you know, uh, or men uh, who will uh, sort of appear to be all right. But the truth of the matter is that we live in a country which is very patriarchal still, which mm. is very conventional still. Mm. And women have a certain role and a certain place, uh, you know, in society. So I think that is more important to look at, given that we live in India. And that, you know, when men on the outside may be a certain way and, you know, may feel very a lot of pride about a woman who's successful and dependent. But actually, when it comes down to brass tacks, um, they, they t turn out to be quite conventional and patriarchal. That's so very, I think that's the yeah. That's very More interesting. Than, that's very interesting to note. Each, each my, my, question, are, my question here is, Ira, would you rather stay single than settle with somebody who does not support your ambitions? 100%. 100%. I think to be in, a, see a partnership, like I said, a partnership is a partnership. That's what it really means. Hmm. So I would 100% rather stay single than be with someone who, who feels threatened or intimidated by me wanting my own identity, wanting my own career, wanting, you know, uh, just wanting to be my own person. It's, I, I would find that very difficult. Right, let's get a slightly different outlook now. Akshita Gandhi, she she is a leading contemporary artist. Akshita, you're creating waves internationally with your art. Would you attribute being able to achieve so much with yourself, having the right support at home, especially uh, with your partner? You're married to an actor who's also very, very ambitious. And isn't it important to support him too as much as you get the support from him? What is the situation looking like for you? Um, Chaiti, I completely agree with you. Uh, I think that uh, when two people are extremely ambitious and, uh, you know, you've known me most of my life, you know, I am. Um, I'm also married to a man who's extremely ambitious, hardworking. And I feel it's so important to uh, find the right kind of synergy uh, between two people. In fact, I, I waited to meet the right person because my art uh, takes me all around the world and I tend to travel a lot, which is extremely unconventional. You know, I remember mm. meeting a lot of people, um, even for marriage, who would uh, be extremely 
uncomfortable with the idea of having their wife sort of take off whenever she had an international show and needed to be there. Um, so I thought it was really important to meet somebody who was a not threatened, uh, be extremely secure because you know when you're traveling, you're meeting a lot of people and um, you're exposed to. Uh, so many different nationalities. You're exposed to the art world. You're exposed to different worlds, people, mm. etc. And I feel very blessed to be with a man who's extremely encouraging of what I do. Um, I'm encouraging of what he does, and uh, also because we come from uh, families and places that are traditional. You know, India is extremely patriarchal, and uh, we get a lot of raised eyebrows about. Oh, you know, I mean, you know, I'll, I'll give you an example. We was we were at a lunch uh, with some family friends, and the wife said, "Oh, you know, um, you're so lucky. Your husband allows you to travel." And to me, that statement bothered me so much. And because you, you have know, a problem with the word "allow," absolutely. So my husband immediately turned around and said, "She doesn't need my permission. I don't own her. We're married." Uh, we're two people who have our own individuality. We're different entities. We live yeah. under the same roof. Yes. We enjoy living together, each other's company, but we cannot hamper each other's growth. And I feel Absolutely. that. Um, Absolutely, and you know, for both of you, Ira and Akshita, both what I'm picking up, and both of you all said the common thing that India is still very, very patriarchal as a society. Nandini, the Oscar curse is real. So when we talk about India being patriarchal, look at what ha what's happening around the world as well. The Best Actress Award recipients are more likely to file for divorce than their their uh, nominated counterparts or Best Actor winners, and that was a part of the Harvard Business Review report that I shared with you as well. Whether it's Sandra Bullock. Uh, you know, Betty Davis, Halle Berry, Emma Thompson, Kate Winslet, so many patterns like this led even the Harvard report too to ask whether women's high status careers affect the marital stability and if so, why? Absolutely. Chethi, ultimately, this is a very, very sad conversation that women have to choose between finding love or actually doing well at work, which, which like means that you cannot really have both. And let me just take you back a couple of years where the man went to work, brought home the cash, bacon, etc. And the woman sat at home, looked after the kids and cooked food, cleaned up. Today, 2022 now, women are in the workforce and they are all doing sort of extremely well. But if it were to come between a man's career or a woman's career, guess what would win? It's the man's career. If a man's job makes him have to shift to a different country, there's this basic understanding that the woman will actually quit her own job and she will be moving with him. If they have babies tomorrow, who will be quitting that job? It will be her. If, if there's anyone sick in, in the house, it will be her who will be called upon to go and look after. And I think that that really brings us back to this main point. What does it mean to have a, a truly supportive partner? What that means is a true 50-50 equality division of the work. If you have children, please lend a hand. If there is cooking in the house, please take your turns. But still, you don't give women that equal chance where their, where their work has to be number one as well. It is yeah. not just a, like like man's job hmm. we'll be constantly telling them to quit or to work a little bit less or to focus more on the house etc etc and before i go to geeta i want to bring in ira ira somewhere does that bother you because still as nandini mentioned the predisposition in society is that when you have a, a child the woman takes a back seat uh, when uh, uh, there is a choice given between one person being able to succeed and the other one to manage the household it always the onus comes upon the woman uh, does that bother you today I think 100% it bothers me, but again, I think it boils down to the relationship and understanding between the two individuals. So, for example, even if it's this web series that I'm acting in at the moment, which is Potluck on Sony Live, it's a comedy, you know, and I'm married to Cyrus Saukar. We have three kids and we're kind of struggling, you know, between keeping our lives, our careers, our children intact. And even there, there's a sort of an exploration of gender roles and, you know, how gender roles are fluid today. And I think that's a very important thing to look at. 
because ultimately it is you know um, as we've been talking about um, the, the really the, the what the two partners are able to do and understand and the kind of respect they have for each other there is an expectation not see in india again it's the marriage of families you know i think that's where the the murkiness starts to come into play because the expectation is not just from the husband it's from the family as well from the elders of the family or from you know relatives and stuff like that so of course it bothers me of course it bothers me but it boils down to what is the understanding between the partner and you agreed you know? agreed absolutely agreed but you know let me bring in geeta khanna she is a very well known matchmaker geeta uh, you know recently the harvard report also mentioned there is a 60% increase in gray divorces gray divorces meaning uh, people who get married for a couple of years after 10 years 20 years they file in for divorces while so many spouses are so happy to have successful high earning wives like you see on your screens right now they're often caught off guard by the trade offs they were not expecting you know the same goes for men they need a supportive spouse um if they don't isn't it better to stay single even for the men not just the women um chaiti uh you know marriage is a very complex uh relationship and uh, i feel that uh you know it's it's marriage is a work in progress and uh, i'll talk about marriage in india because i've lived in different countries of the world and i see how marriages work there as opposed to india and india again like everybody else has said on the panel is very patriarchal and unfortunately or unfortunately the parents of family the extended family take such a large part in 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 the functioning of of an upbringing of of uh the children that uh, who are ultimately getting married and uh, you know choosing life partners yeah and yes the men are uh you know brought up to believe that they are going to be the main earners and and uh, they're very happy they're very happy when they come to look for partners and uh, ask you know ask us to help them assist them find those partners they're very happy to know that their their to be partner should you know is well educated has a great job or a great but career but are they really ready for that trade off you when you have a no, high success no that's what i'm coming wife. to yes they they're not because they have not been brought up to believe that their wives or to be wives uh have the ability to maybe earn more than them or as much as them uh and have as important a life outside their home as them uh they haven't give, been given that life skill growing up so uh, since by their coach, family since you coach so many of them as well do you then advise them to then rather stay single because then you we are talking of a society that becomes very hypocritical You know I still believe in the institution of marriage very strongly believe and I think it's just it's just uh talking maybe uh to- sitting them down talking them through the process and making them realize that your partner is second to none she's probably uh, you know she can take care of much more than uh, than the man can the woman in, in the partnership and it's it's just understanding that you don't have to be single you know you can be married and still have that equation nandini uh, do you think you can still have that equation with somebody who doesn't uh, is not able to accept a partner who's uh, high flying earning well because you're like geeta also mentioned uh, they want all of that but they're not ready for the trade off I actually think Jyoti it will be quite tough you know these are rules that you either set before you actually get this married you know otherwise later on whenever things go wrong uh, whenever the food is not good enough or the house is looking dirty or then there are guests coming over for like dinner it is the female who will be constantly sort of expected you know and i'll just give you a like few little little sort of examples first of all when we use this term career woman what does it even mean career woman you know it is like it is an odd one out we don't say career man right men are all meant to be career men women become career women which which i think in itself says that this is not the norm right but i think that going back to what you just asked um is it some thing that a that a couple can actually work on over time maybe i would actually think that these are things that should be talked about earlier before you tie that knot talk about children talk about sharing of, of workload talk about careers is it okay if the woman in the home comes home late is it fine if she has to travel 15 days in the month 
is it okay if she's to go and host networking sort of events you know these are talks that actually need to be had earlier and just clear boundaries sort of expectations as to what it will be like later will you know i mean will the sort of you know i mean will the in law say tomorrow that listen now that you have kids and your partner earn sort of enough money why do you need to work you know and you know what that is the other thing women are i mean it is it is thought that you know what women work not just because they would like to work it mm. is a to earn money so if your if your partner makes makes a like good number then it is an oh but why do you have to work then when your partner earns and that is quite sort of interesting right so because i, I, I want to bring i want to bring working. akshita in because she communicates a lot with the art as well uh, gender stereotypes what's your take on this uh, you've gone ahead and broken the gender st- stereotype somewhere with your partner i do know your partner very well and he's somewhere uh, equally running the household as much as you are uh, and you all aren't the uh, conventional couple you all contribute equally to everything possible how does that work out with you akshita so i think um, like it's been mentioned before we had a great understanding before we got married we spoke about these things at length and we decided that we wanted um an equal marriage you know and we both believe in egalitarianism and we split everything we split the rent um we we divide the financial responsibilities uh we divide like when i have to travel the house is his responsibility when he is away shooting i am the one who kind of takes in charge and of course we don't have children so i can't speak about uh, shared parenting responsibilities but as far as the house goes um as far as being present at you know family events gatherings etc we both uh, divide that equally you know even when i'm away and um somebody needs to be there at things that my parents are hosting he's he's there i you know have been lucky in the sense that um we both believe that we both been lucky because there is a sense of um like you mentioned there's that we we've, we've broken this whole sense of gender stereotype and even when we get raised eyebrows and we get questions about why does she not do this and why does she not do that you know we put our foot down and say well this is the life that we've chosen let to me live. Uh, yes and, and let me happen. and let me now understand from era era there is a general ac- expectation like geeta mentioned nandini mentioned from a single woman when she goes out to meet a man especially when it's got to do with marriage in those organized setups as well which still exists in india today let's not fool ourselves uh what is the actual impediment you encounter when it comes to uh aligning with that person intellectually or mentally uh, being on the same page because still as you rightly mentioned too we're a very very patriarchal society i tell you the truth uh, chadi you know i come from an extremely uh, liberal minded family um, so i'm lucky i'm blessed i've always been allowed to live my life the way i wanted and be independent and stand on my own feet uh, i'm not conventional my mother is unconventional she's never pushed me to get married and there's my father although it reached a stage where you know we were indian girls you know how it is you and i are also very good friends and we're around the same age so at certain at a certain point no matter how liberal your parents may be they will start you know sitting up and saying you know marriage maybe think about it you know although though none of my parents have ever pushed me hmm. uh and still don't there was an incident which is it was hilarious to me because it was more a sort of a uh it was a, it, for me it was a sort of a, a research experiment at, at some level where i went to a couple of these marriage bureaus just to explore what the thing was and you i was shocked um the kind of parameters that that were there you know in terms of um even something like smoking or you know um vices or uh, you know uh, your time you, you know your your pattern with your pattern of life or your interests or your everything everything is scrutinized down to the last t and i'm a, i'm an open book i've always lived my life as an open book and i have make no bones about it and i'm very proud of it and uh, i would never sort of change those things for somebody and i think that in itself is a big sort of a red flag if at that very stage you know you, you are you're you're being told that you have to sort of but at the same time i agree with everyone and what everyone has been saying on the panel about the fact that marriage is a huge adjustment it's a huge compromise you know there are so many factors involved So I don't think it's so easy and so black and white to sort of pinpoint it and say this experience was hilarious to me because I just you know I just I I literally met this woman and I I said well this isn't going to work for me I didn't meet one man through this marriage thing sure. and I never went through with it but I just I found that um 
it is a it really is see you know at the end of the day we are living in a global very connected world today 2022 mm. is a very world from our parents mm. world from our grandparents world uh, evolutionarily uh, women are the nurturers men are the providers and now this is something that you have to attract from many different sides mm. coming to india coming to 2022 in india it is the conditioning you know as someone mentioned on the panel it is the conditioning with which a man is also brought up you yeah. know uh, i think that conditioning we talk a lot about mental trauma these days we talk a lot about mental health these days but this kind of conditioning can cultural social yeah. conditioning is equally important to try and demystify and try and break down because right. again it comes down to how are you going to get past that condition correct you correct know, and how much does it matter to you to, with your partner to get past that condition i, I completely really agree with you i completely life. agree with you so and hence geeta what kind of a partner should a single strong successful woman like say ira akshita of course was uh, very lucky to find one and if i can take the liberty to even mention nandini bhalla they are all super successful uh, women what is the kind of partner they must be looking for and do they even exist most men would be intimidated by their success see they they people who are hugely successful women since we're talking about women here women who are hugely successful should find men who are going to be open and accepting of who they are not necessarily by what they're doing uh you know i'm living currently living in a country where i see um different cultures and different ethnicities getting married and living with in in such unison it's unbelievable and and i see the men pitching in and helping out when when the women go out to work but and, is that number that, large in india geeta is that number larger than in in india is it large no. in india or do you find such no, men in not. india but that's just what i'm trying to say it's it's a large number of indians who no longer live in india but live in another country and are happily marrying people from different ethnic ethnicities different uh, race religion uh and happily adjusting to a life where the uh, the wife may be uh, more successful than the man and uh, you know she's out working he may be home looking after the kids or doing the cooking or whatever and it works you know so the system uh, works where you uh, co exist as partners and co parent uh when you have kids so hmm. why can't it work in india it doesn't work in india because again it's a conditioning it's the upbringing that uh we've brought up our men to believe oh you know you are probably just god and uh, you you know yeah. when you grow up and get married you're going to be going to bring you a wife who's going to be a, a replica of your mother yeah yeah you know absolutely and, uh, and and hence we've gone ahead all of us put together and really proven the report that has come out in Harvard business uh, review which says that if a woman uh, cannot find a partner who is supportive it is better for that woman to stay single otherwise it it becomes a bit of a morale and career sapping morass on that note i thank you very much all of you for taking the time out and joining us on this very important discussion we hope to break the gender stereotypes we hope to hope to bring about a more informative discussions in mainstream media and normalize them as well i thank you very much ira akshita nandini and geeta for joining us on this broadcast